next we have uh, Edith Young, who leads the uh, Mobile Collective Fund, uh, which is part of the 500 uh, Startups family of funds. And she's going to be telling us about uh, the mobile vertical. All right. Thank you, Safa. Hi, guys. How are you? The complete guide to Yuvaya and mobile startup. So thank you for choosing this room. This is definitely the better room, and that's why we're here. Uh, my name is Edith Young. I'm a partner at 500 Startups, uh, running the Mobile Collective Fund. And uh, before 500, I actually spent 10 years mostly in enterprise software. I started as an engineer. I uh, was with uh, Siebel System for about six years, and then Oracle bought Siebel. I was with Oracle, and then after Oracle, I went to Autodesk. And after 10 years, mostly enterprise software, decided to get into more consumer focus. So I spent the last four years, um, actually I started another company, <laughs> uh, which is a Sequoia-backed company, 150 million install, mostly on the Android. Uh, and then we actually sold it to a Chinese gaming company last July. And that's why I, when I decided, you know, it's time to do more investing, I uh, decided to do mobile collective because the whole concept is that there's so much going on in mobile and Basically, 100% of my LPs are people from the industry. And yes, I started my career when I was three years old, and that's why I still look like 25. All right, so uh, in the next 15 minutes, I want to spend some time to convince you why you need to care about mobile, um, and then look at you know, how do you actually evaluate a mobile company, particularly more focus on B2C uh, app-related businesses, very specific type of question that you can ask uh, the founders that you meet. Uh, and then after that, some of the more specific tools that I actually personally use, and then I will end with you know, sort of more cutting edge, what are some of the later trends uh, that I'm most excited about. All right, you need to care about mobile because mobile unicorn kick ass. And how kick ass? Well, there's over 105 mobile unicorn and combined value is over 839 billion. Um, as of Q3 2015. And of course, some of these are also public companies like Facebook and Alibaba. There's a whole bunch of other unicorns that's not public yet that's over a billion uh, dollar or more. And what's also interesting with this particular study is 85% of the mobile unicorn either come from US or China. But if you look at this list of 14 countries, the top five, which is China, US, uh, Japan, Korea, and also India, most of the entrepreneurs are servicing where the customers are, right? But for the rest of these countries, which is on this list, of, you know, the rest of the nine, all these entrepreneurs, where they came from, they're actually servicing countries that's outside where they belong. So it's super interesting, and I can't wait to see companies, billion dollar company come from this region. And another thing that I thought was quite interesting to look at some of the sectors, 90% uh, of the value of these unicorns come from seven different sectors, including, of course, social, um, like Facebook, commerce, transportation, uh, fintech, messaging, gaming, food, and beverage. And I wanna, one thing I want to emphasize is that social is not equal to messaging. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. I wrote a very long article about you know, messaging is the new platform. Is messaging is actually eating the world. Is not just mobile and software. Okay, but mobile is really, really tough. How tough? Um, well, marketing on you know, mobile marketing is super tough, and engagement. Trying to get once you how many of you download an app and you never go back again? Many of us. Um, how do you actually make money? And plus, on top of that. Payment is just not ready. And I was chatting with some of my friends in that table earlier. When we're working on Dolphin, we have tons of users in India and in Egypt, but we have no way to collect money because mobile payment is still so, so definitely lagging. Um, and then device fragmentation. Um, just look at China alone, pretty much 99% Android, um, but there's no Google Play. So, and all of them are on different different versions of Android, what do you do? It's really, really tough to, to market and develop in, in certain countries. And then most of the ideas that you know, an entrepreneur has thought about, you know, how do you actually avoid all the big guys We're talking about you know, Facebook, Apple, Google, uh, Amazon, or you know, the BAT, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, they probably already working on these ideas. Um, how are you gonna deal with that? So you end up with see a lot of these kind of founders, we, we, if you ask them more about it, they have, really have no clue. 
So how do you actually value some of these deal other than, you know, find a guy that look like that, really chilled and, and cool and seems like he has all the answers. There are actually a few questions when you meet a mobile focused entrepreneur that you can ask. So for all these various different problems, um, I want to give you a very specific type of question that you can ask. And by the way, you know, different type of apps, and in, on these examples, I'm really focused on B2C. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about you know, other focus I have recently. But if you're looking at a B2C focus, app developers or entrepreneurs, even they may not know all the answers, they should test and think about some of these things. And if they said that my product is so great that I don't need marketing, automatically I would install. The first thing I would say to them, because you're lazy, not because your product is so great. You can put easily a few hundred bucks on, on Facebook and Twitter and be able to test out what's your basic CPI, CPA. And if he doesn't want to do it, it's because they just don't, not because their product is so great and, and users just magically come. I, I definitely don't buy that. But at, at a minimum, you can look at, there's like all these various different way from cross promotions or app store optimization. Of course, if you have a little bit of money, you can do better at like buy a CPI, CPA type install for ad network. Uh, but at least the basic of app store optimization is completely free. So what's preventing you from doing that? And if you're talking to an entrepreneur and they have no clue what you're talking about, or at least you go down this list, they don't have a good answer, you can pretty much walk, walk out of the room. Um, mobile engagement is also pretty tough. And usually I will ask the entrepreneur was, I don't invest, well, there's always exception to the rules, but I usually don't invest in anything that haven't launched yet if you're a mobile uh, B2C type app. Because if you don't, which means that you have no data in terms of installs, you have no idea what's the monthly active, what's the daily active, what's the churn, what's the lifetime value. Um, this particular screenshot is the DAU growth for Slack. I don't know how many of you guys use it, but you can see at the beginning it's quite low, but that now the the growth rate is just amazing. But of course, this type of app is very, very different of if you're looking at a dating app. Think about if you're a dating app, if it's successful, after a few months, that the user should not be using it anymore, right? So it really depends on what type of app that you're looking at. Then, you know, sort of the ratio will, will vary um, in terms of, you know, install versus MAU, DAU. Um, monetization, also really tough. I, I actually don't expect um, from, for our Dolphin experience for the last, first two years, um, even after a good, after we raised Series A, uh, we we didn't in, we did not focus on monetization at all because because I was working on a do, uh, on a browser, which was very very different from if you were sort of an Uber type or dating type app. But still, if you talk to an entrepreneur, they should have some thoughts about they can either make money from. Is it advertising, some sort of subscription? Are you going to try to drive install for other apps? Which, by the way, um, for, for US, minimum uh, CPI, if I'm willing to push an install for other apps, most of the developers are willing to pay me from the range as low as a dollar on, on iOS, or maybe 50 cents on Android, up to sometimes $10 uh, during Christmas. You can make a lot of money if you're able to drive install. All right, then after that, payment. They said, okay, no, 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 I, I know how to make money. But then you should ask them, well, it depends on what region you belong to, how do you collect? So I had a very, very good conversation with uh, some folks from, from Google Play. They just launched uh, in India um, to support sub-dollar uh, billing. What that means is you, because the app store pretty, pretty much built you know, from from Cupertino or from California, people can afford pay the dollar. But in emerging country, even the dollar is a lot of money. Um, so in India, they just launched sub-dollar uh, billing. And this, these are things that are fairly new. But if you don't know that, how are you going to charge for that? And, you know, and carrier billing is not. And Google is still working with a lot of carriers around the world to trying to improve their carrier billing. Or, or you can, you know, just like Uber type or um, in China, a lot of the app will basically have billing, billing with like Alipay or Tenpay. All these, they need to be aware these API actually exist. Otherwise, they can't even charge for, um, for the product. And then um, if I actually would love to learn more about the MENA region, should I first start with iOS or should, should I start with Android? Well, the answer is it depends. Well, if you're talking to a developer's 
uh, in Silicon Valley, 100% of the app developers I meet in Silicon Valley start with iOS. Um, but if you are in Southeast Asia, in China, Android is number one. And that's why I have two phones and I'm constantly left and right hand playing both of them uh, because I'm a big nerd. All right, um, so how do you actually find the right deals? There is no answer to find the right deal. It's so hard, but I listed some of these here because these are some of the tools that I do use quite frequently. Um, so I love mobile action because other than, you know, um, they are awesome, also Turkish founder. Um, on top of that, I actually do use that for a few particular reasons is because you can actually take a particular app. It will tell you all the competitive app. And on top of that, it will tell you all the specific keywords that they would suggest at the frequency of that particular keyword that will show up uh, on the App Store. Super useful. Um, Aptopia App Annie, uh, Aptopia, also another 500 uh, portfolio company, is basically a cheaper version of App Annie. But what I use these tools for is I can tell exactly over time from day one and then the install over time. So a lot of the uh, developers and the founders who are pretty good at you know, preparing for raising money, they will usually do a big launch and push right before they pitch you. So they can say, look, my, my growth is like this. Right? But the fact is, I don't really believe any, any of the things that they say. So I will go back to these tools and look at, oh yeah, they, they're really good at launch, but after that, the churn is very high, so none of them stay. So you definitely need to use some of these tools to validate what they're telling you. Um, I really like CB Insights, um, although it's a little bit expensive, but it will tell you on a regular basis. And Anand is actually really, really good uh, analyst that literally tell you some of these trends uh, around the world. Uh, Metamark, I actually like their mobile app quite a bit, um, particularly on iOS. So you t take the company name, it will actually give you score and like how they're doing recently. It's very, very handy. AngelList, of course, everybody knows. Um, and then I put my own website is because I do think that you should stay on top of what, who are some of the industry experts. Um, personally, I love uh, Benedict Evans from um, Andreessen Horowitz. I just love everything he tweets and what he writes about. Um, but of course, you know, keeping track in, in my field, what are, was the latest, like who are the, play, who are the one that actually in charge? I, I can tell you now for Google Play, particularly um, different region have different editorial, which means that you know, in Cupertino in, in the US, they have specific people for each other category. So they will pick what to feature. But for the rest of the world, uh, let's say Southeast Asia, for example, it's mainly two guys. One, each guy managed four countries. So in their mind is they also want to know what are some of the coolest things that they can feature. So you need to know like who are some of these guys really can make or break and help with your portfolio company to grow. Um, so these are some of the tools that I use quite a bit. And then the more and more I think about it, um, you know, Mobile Collective has only been around for a year. And everybody asked me, what's, what does mobile mean? And of course, you know, many of you, and me included, at the very beginning, I'm always thinking, I want to invest in things that I understand. But the more and more I think about it, because I'm early stage, if I'm late stage or growth stage, it's a little bit different on how you evaluate it. But early stage, I should be looking at things that I actually are kind of scared and things that I don't understand. It's a really, really big change shift in my head. So therefore, which means that I need to have more friends. I need to have more co-investors. And frankly, um, I, so for me, I don't know about how all of you guys run your fund. Um, I have select, pick, and invite specific expert who become my fund advisor. Um, one guy actually had early investors of Twitter and, and Square and many other Bitcoin company as my fintech advisor. Um, and then uh, Rob Chandok, which is a former senior VP of Qualcomm, who look at help me with all the IoT things. Friends are very important. And then partner, partner up with industry experts. So I've been going after a lot of these Google Play editorial because I want to know what they're looking at. So think about if you're fintech, maybe you should you know, think about like, what are some of the major bank banks, like what are they looking at? Maybe some of the corporate ventures, you know, Christine is sitting in front, she have access to a lot of things that Intel is doing, right? You need to know what's going on in these major players and, you know, and a lot of things, a lot of times they will announce publicly. You can read the press release, but still, it's good to have good friends. Um, 
what are some of the top talents uh, in from your country? I think the, the best example is Robin Lee Baidu, who worked at Google before and went back to China and started the Google of China. How cool is that? There's a lot of amazing talent um, in the US, actually from, they're originally from this region. You should know who they are. And, you know, I, actually, I don't think the Chinese are quite good at doing that, but many, many of like my friends in, around the world, they form various different groups in the US and, and think about how they can actually give back. And think about you can find a lot of your friends actually in the US right now, and you should pull them back to really do something fun in this particular region. Um, and then I'm actually really big on investing in first clone of what you see in China or the US. Um, I have done a, a handful of investment with Kylie in Southeast Asia because I have no problem. And, and I think Ky that's why Kylie actually invested in uh, Grab Taxi, which is basically cloned of uh, Uber and, uh, and Lyft. And then again, do your research, um, industry, your category. Um, that's why some of these tools is very, very, very helpful because you can you know, look at mobile action and you know exactly is this particular category even matter? Do people actually search on it? Um, you need to know who are the competitors. At least when you talk to talk to the entrepreneur, they should be able to tell you these my are, are my competitors. And on top of that, these are some of the other uh, su successful apps overseas that they are aware of. Um, of course, stay on top of the latest latest mobile trends. That's why you need to subscribe to my newsletter. And then invest in category leaders, not followers. Um, I said that because. Some of my early, there's a couple of investments I have done to the end of last year. They're having a hard time raising again. And I'm like, ah, why, why, if I know what I know now, would I invest in it again? It's not, have nothing to do with they don't run, the company actually run really, really well. In fact, they're probably almost profitable. But the problem is they're like the 10th version of that category. So if you're early stage and you don't have follow on downstream investors, your, your company will have problems. Um, I'm not going into too much detail about evaluating people, but I, I think particularly for early stage, if that entrepreneur cannot express, be able to pitch, they will have a very, very tough time to raise series A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it's not even about, you know, are they great developers or not, or, or their product is good enough or not. It's all about them. And I can't emphasize this big enough. All right, I'm gonna, I have three minutes left. So I'm gonna talk about three or four trends that I'm totally psyched. Uh, virtual reality is the number one thing I was just telling some of my new friends there. I just tested something last week. Um, it's an eye tracking goggle. Anything that I see, it just blow up and it's amazing. And, and uh, end of Q1 2016 is when Oculus is going to launch. And Samsung, HTC, um, Microsoft, and I heard that Qualcomm just invested in Magic Leap. There's a lot of amazing things happening, and I think 2016 is going to be the tipping point for VR. IoT, super interesting. How's that related to mobile? Because, because all these things around us, it's all going to have low battery, Bluetooth chipset. All they're going to do is transmit in information. And you're going to hold a phone, you're going to have literally data from everywhere and mobile is going to be the central point. And there's going to be a lot of things happening. And frankly, I'm actually going to spend a whole lot more time in China um, because that's where most of the manufacturing is happening. Esport. Um, did you guys know that there is actually 27 million people watching League of Legends um, and versus on almost 20 million watching the NBA Finals? There's a lot of money going on in esports. And, uh, very, very exciting space. I absolutely think that messaging is eating the world. This is an article I put out two weeks during Thanksgiving week. Uh, basically talk about all these various different uh, B2B, B2B use cases that's happening on WeChat. And I think that Facebook and WhatsApp have a lot of learning to do um, and copy these guys and think about how you can actually leverage a messaging platform. And then I think the next five years of mobile innovation is actually going to come from Asia not Silicon Valley. And I said that because just uh, November 11th, which is the single day in China, in one day, 14.3 billion transactions happen, US dollar, in one day, in China. 
Um, there's a lot of amazing use cases that you and I never heard about because everything is written in Chinese. And I will translate more for you guys later on. So <laughs> I hope you can have your mooncake and eat it too. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. It's not really working. Um, if you're interested in learning more, uh, pretty much all the materials in on, on my blog, you can email me, you can tweet me, uh, and, and yes, subscribe to my newsletter. Thank you. <laughs>